Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake with Redefined Horizons. This is another Field Survey Friday video that we're doing on differential leveling. In this video, we are going to talk about how you adjust the closure error in a differential level loop or level run. If you're not familiar with differential leveling, you want to go back and watch the first video we did in this series. It talks about this an overview of differential leveling. Okay, so uh, we talked a little bit in the first video about how you calculate a closure error. I just want to uh, review that how you figure out the closure error in differential leveling survey. Then we're going to talk about some different ways you can adjust that error. Okay, so in the first scenario, we have, you've got a, a, a published elevation here at point 11, and you've got a published elevation here at point number 12. Okay, you set up, you do your level run, you do your calculations, and the elevation you get down here at number 12 is not exactly the published elevation. It's going to be slightly different. So it's, let's say it's 10202, so 200 higher. Okay, so in that case, we have a closure error here at number 12 of 200s. Okay. So that's one way. One way to calculate a closure error is to compare a published elevation with your measured elevation. Now let's just say you're out in an area where you don't have another published elevation to check into. In that case, you run a loop. Okay, so you close back into your starting point, and again, your numbers are going to be slightly different. So let's say we run a loop here back to number 11. We tie in 12, we come back to number 11. Okay, we're going to get an answer that's slightly different. So in this case, we get 99.96. That means we have a closure error of 4 hundredths. Now again, we're talking about errors here, not blunders, right? You don't want to adjust blunders. So a real common blunder when you're when you're running a differential leveling survey is somebody will misread the whole foot on the rod. So instead of 413, they'll read 513 or 313, you'll be off a whole foot. Okay, that's a blunder. Or the Philly rod, one of the sections of the Philly rod doesn't get locked in place and the rod slips. That's really hard to find, but that's another example of a blunder. Okay. So we don't adjust blunders, we fix blunders. We're adjusting small measurement errors, right? We're talking about a few hundreds usually, what is, is what we're gonna adjust on a level loop. Okay, so that's one way to calculate your closure errors. Okay, another way to do that, if you this, this doesn't work if you have a level run, but if you have a level loop, if you have a closed loop, okay, and you add up all your back sites, so you sum your back sites, your back site rod readings, should be equal to the sum of your foresight readings in a closed level loop. Okay. So if you add those two numbers up and subtract one from the other, if they're not equal, that's going to give you your closure error. Okay. So if you subtract your foresights, some of your foresights from the sum of your backsights, that's going to give you your closure error. That's kind of a shortcut, right? We'll probably go through that when I do the video on level notes. We'll show you how that works. Okay, so let's say we've identified that we have an error. What are some different ways that we can adjust it? We can adjust that error, right? Spread it out, kind of balance it out. <clears throat> okay, well, before we, we figure out which method we want to use, we want to talk about the different error sources in a differential leveling survey, okay? So let's talk about the different types of errors we can get. We're going to come over here and look back at this diagram, right? Okay, so first of all, you can have an error if your rod isn't plumbed up over the point that you're measuring, either your backside or your foresight. So if your rod's out of plumb, if it's leaning, tipped, okay, that, that can generate a little bit of error, okay, your, uh, your instrument operator can make an error when he's reading the rod, uh, just a small error, I'm not talking about a blunder here, but, you know, he, he consistently rounds down or rounds up, you know, sometimes when you look at a Philly rod, the, the crosshair doesn't always land exactly on the, the top or bottom of a mark, it's part way up a mark, and then you've got to do some rounding there, so that introduces some error, Okay, so just some, there's some error in the rod readings. Okay, and then your level, okay, either because of imperfections in the instrument or the way it's set up, it can be slightly out of level. Okay, we're not talking about a major out of whack, just slightly out of level. That will introduce some errors. Okay, if your back sights and your fore sights are not equal, that will introduce some errors. Okay, so all, all of that introduces error. That's why when we get back to where we started, the number's not always exactly the same. It's because of that random error. Tends to cancel, but doesn't always cancel. Okay, now let's just talk about real quick why it's important to balance your foresights and your backsights. When I say balance, that means the distance from the level to the backside is about the same as the distance from the level from the foresight 
from the from the level to the foresight. So you want these two distances to be about the same. And the reason why is if your level is slightly out of adjustment, if you balance your backside and your foresight, most of that error gets eliminated. So let's just say our level is slightly out of adjustment. Okay, so it's reading not quite a level plane, but something a little bit different. Okay. If these two distances are equal, that error is going to cancel out. So good party chief will keep his backside and foresight distances roughly equal. Okay, if you have a level that's slightly out of adjustment or it's not leveled properly on a particular setup and your foresight and backside distances aren't equal, that's going to introduce error into your level survey. You're going to you're going to see a bigger closure error. So that's why we try and keep the backside and foresight distances equal, right? Just to let me draw you another picture just to give you an example might help okay so if here's my level okay and i've got my two rods and my backside rod is way closer than my foresight rod okay now if with a perfectly leveled level that doesn't matter okay but none of our levels are ever perfect right they have imperfections in the instrument and we can't level them perfectly so if you'll notice if i if i've got a big difference in my backside distance to my foresight distance and my levels out of adjustment Right, that error is going to be way bigger on the longer site than on the so shorter site, and so you're going to get a larger closure error. When I was going to college and learning how to run levels, one of the first things I learned in college, usually one of the first things you learned as a surveyor, we had five or six uh, automatic levels for the for the class, and my professor purposely kept one level that was slightly out of adjustment uh, because he wanted to teach us if you if you got that level. Now it took a couple weeks before we figured a few weeks before we figured out which level it was okay so if you if you grab that level and you didn't know and you didn't balance your back sights and foresights you ended up with a level loop that didn't close which really sucked and i think that was my team at least once <laughs> okay so that's a that he was teaching us the hard way to balance our back sights and our foresights okay so now that we kind of understand where the errors come from in a differential leveling survey that we can make some reasonable decisions about how how we might adjust that so the first, the first method is to adjust it per turn, okay? We call it, every setup, we call a turn, okay? And the reason they call it a turn is because you're turning, right? So you set up here, you back sight, you turn to your turn point. You set up here, you back sight, you turn to your foresight point. Okay, so this is a turn and this is a turn. Okay, so one way to adjust your level network is to take your closure error and adjust it per turn, okay? And usually it's done, you take your closure error divided by the number of turns and you apply an equal adjustment to each turn, okay? The reason that's reasonable is because you could say, well, you know, if I balance my back sights and my foresights, most of my errors are per setup, right? Back sight reading, foresight reading, error at, at the level. Okay, so it's per setup, so I want to adjust per turn, one setup, right, per setup. You make that adjustment per setup, and it's equal, right? Now, that's one way to do it. That's the most typical way. That's the way we do it here at my shop. Now, another way to do it, an alternative method is to say, I'm going to take the adjustment, and I'm going to adjust it based on the distance between the backside and foresight on each turn. So I'm going to adjust... Setups, setups or turns where there was a longer distance covered, I'm going to adjust that more because it is harder to read the rod at longer distances. So I'm going to assume there's more error in a longer distance between the backside and foresight than on a shorter distance. And so what you do is you take your distances. Okay, so, um, so for example, let's just say I'm going to make the math easy. Let's say we had an 800 foot long level loop and we had eight hundredths of missed closure. Okay, so we can make a ratio out of that. We say, all right, okay, for every foot in the distance between the foresight and the back, the back sight and the foresight, we're gonna have whatever it is. It's uh, eight, eight, zero, 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 eight. So that's, tenths, hundreds, thousands, tenths, eight ten thousandths of an adjustment per foot. Okay, and then if we could say, all right, if the first sight was 200 feet between backside and foresight, the first setup, sorry, the first turn, the distance between backside and foresight was 200. 
and the second turn the distance was 600 okay then we calculate our what's our correction per the distance okay so this would get a correction of two hundredths this turn would get a correction of two hundredths and this turn would get a correction of six hundredths again I made the math easy it doesn't always work out that way okay but you can you can see how if you set up the right ratio here you can correct your readings based on the distance covered between the backside and foresight that's another way to do it there are some leveling programs that allow you to do that you could also do that in a spreadsheet now in order to do that you have to know the horizontal distances between your points most leveling networks you don't you don't always have a horizontal location on your turn point so you don't know that distance okay if you use a method called three wire leveling in three wire leveling you can actually calculate the distance between your foresight and your backside based on your rod readings you got to take two extra rod readings okay but you can do it i'm not i'm probably not going to cover three wire leveling because we don't use it but you can use that method and then have your horizontal distances to adjust in this way or you've got to get some horizontal coordinates you know you got to shoot your turn points with your gps or with your total station and then you could you could calculate your adjustment that way but that's one of the reasons we typically at my shop will use the per turn adjustment method and not the the the, the distance method of adjustment because we don't always have the distances between our between our uh, backside and our foresights. Okay. All right, the last method you could use is you could use some kind of best fit model, some kind of least squares method, right? Where you say, all right, I think my typical error per turn is this. And then if you have a, a level, now you can't do this with a level run or a level loop, but if you have a, a situation where you've got a network, so let's say you got four control points, okay? And you've done some cross ties. So you run a loop around the edge and then you cross over like this. Okay, you can actually use a program like Starnet to do a least squares adjustment. Okay, which is just a type of best fit adjustment. Okay, and I, I may, when I, I'm going to do some videos that teach you guys about best fit adjustments. I may use leveling as an example. Okay, so those are some different ways, a couple different ways you can adjust your level networks. Uh, your level differential leveling surveys again you don't want to adjust blunders you only want to adjust the random error right it should just be a few hundreds most of the time that you're dealing with okay so what i'm going to do we're going to do a, a another video we're going to do a vid video on leveling field notes we're going to do a video on just kind of best practices for for differentialing level surveys kind of tips for the field guys okay then we're going to um we'll do a video where we actually work some differential leveling problems so there were a couple problems i had on problem set 105 for the CST LSIT that my folks worked that they had some trouble with so I wanted to do these kind of overview videos then we'll go back in and rework those problems now that my people will have some background so we'll do two or three or four more videos on differential leveling I appreciate you guys watching this field survey Friday video and we will catch you on the next episode